Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar and virtual open house of federal land entitled What Makes the Philippines a Perfect Home and Haven for Investing, especially for foreign nationals. Of course, we have a special guest this afternoon. Uh, we'll introduce him to you later. So this afternoon, we will learn about how the Philippine economy is doing and what the state of the real, the real estate market is in the Philippines amidst the pandemic. Uh, from no other than Mr. Kenneth Stern, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Lamudi Philippines. So this afternoon, we'd like to introduce to you our guest speaker. Uh, he's no other than Mr. Kenneth Stern. He is the CEO and Managing Director of Lamudi Philippines. Kenneth is a real estate veteran with 10 years of experience in the industry in the United States, Australia, and the Philippines. And prior to joining Lamudi, he was a country manager of Remax Philippines, and he helped the company grow to be the largest real estate franchise in the country by number of offices, agents, and transaction volume. So Kenneth holds a master's degree in international business at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia, and a bachelor's degree in business administration at Boston University, USA. Kenneth was also previously Bloomberg's and Business World Live's property expert on One News. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Kenneth Stern. Good afternoon, Ken. Hi, Chari. Thanks for having me today. And Hello, thank, good uh, afternoon. Federal Land for having me. Yes. Thank you once again for um, giving us your valuable time this afternoon. Uh, so, this time, uh, as CEO of Lamudi. So congratulations on the new role. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I think uh, Jesse is going to uh, present the slides on your behalf. Perfect. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Chari, and thank you, Federal Land, for having us today. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, basically the, the main topic we want to cover is why the Philippines is the perfect uh, place to invest uh, for your home, uh, especially for foreign nationals. So with that, we'll go into about who Lamudi is, um, how we can help, also some market information, uh, pre-pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, um, and as we enter into the GCQ, how the trends have evolved uh, the real estate market here. And I'll also uh, then cover um, some of the, uh, you know, things that people are looking for in terms of demand um, and supply for the real estate market and what actually is a is a good investment to make. Um, so with that, uh, I'll go ahead and get in, go into the first slide, please. Next slide, please. So Lamudi is a connector um, at the foundation of the company. Uh, we bring buyers and sellers together and we are the point person um, in, in the sense that we help you in that part of the process, the lead generation of finding uh, whether you're a home buyer, the, the perfect property, um, or if you're the seller, the perfect uh, buyer for your property. And that's where our job uh, comes in. Next slide. At Lamudi, we helped. Uh, we want to help every single person find their dream property in the Philippines, and we do that online. Uh, our goal is to create the most comprehensive, trustworthy, and efficient experience for buying and selling properties online. So, a little bit about the history of the company. We've been around for about six years now. We were founded in 2014. Uh, this was founded by the Rocket Group, uh, so Rocket Internet. They also founded company, companies such as uh, Lazada, Zalora, Food Panda, um, and the likes. Uh, in 2015, we, were, uh, we acquired my property. Um, and in 2017, 2018, we became a 360 um, provider of services campaigns with things like Lamudi Academy, um, our Lamudi Trend Reports, um, and many services uh, for the developer side as well. Uh, most recently, we were acquired by EMPG, the Emerging Markets Property Group, which is one of the largest groups for online classifieds in the world, um, which is a great move uh, 
for the industry because they bring a lot of knowledge and experience specifically for real estate classifieds. So uh, we're definitely looking to expand, uh, grow our business. Uh, we're scaling our business at the moment. So while many companies are contracting and downsizing, we're actually uh, expanding and providing more products and services and bigger headcount um, to provide uh, a better, more transparent uh, experience for, for home seekers and for sellers. So just uh, some fast facts about what we do and, and what uh, our, um, our uh, recent um, numbers look like. So in 2019, we had about 6.5 million page views per month. And in mid 2020, we reached about 7.5 million page views per month. That translated to about uh, 140,000 leads per month in 2019 and about 173,000 leads per month in 2020. So what uh, that shows is that despite uh, a pandemic, despite economic slowdown globally, people are still going online to search for properties. The interest is still there. People are looking at real estate as a, uh, a viable, uh, stable investment, um, and they're going online to do that. So that's where we come in. Um, we're that online uh, marketplace. Uh, we are the uh, usually the first point of contact, um, and we try to help people find that perfect property. Um, so we've been doing it seven and a half million times a month um, since uh, since 2020. So I'll go into now a little bit of our forecast for uh, Q4. Um, this is in regards to uh, the real estate market and where we see trends um, moving. Uh, so it's been a, a pretty volatile year, um, both in the real estate market, but also um, in, in the larger economy. Uh, so we want to kind of shed some, shed some light on what to expect uh, in next quarter. So according to Collier's report, who's a partner of ours, um, we saw our, uh, a price drop in rentals about seven and a half, uh, seven point seven percent, going into going into the Q4 of 2020. Um, we're expecting the recovery to start happening in the second half of 2021. So first half of 2021 should. Uh, most likely remain uh, status quo. Um, we're not expecting major changes there, um, but we should see the correction happening in the rental prices uh, in the first, in the second half of 2021. Um, following those price drops, we predict a increase in prices in 2021, in 2021 due to investor, uh, um, investor confidence rising. The main trend we saw in terms of demographics was a millennial trend uh, who continued to dominate the market. So moving from Q4 of 2018 to Q4 of 2019, um, that grew from 47.63% uh, uh, leads um, all the way uh, to 47.63% of the leads in 2019. So very similar numbers there. And in October, 2020, 32% uh, 2020, of our leads coming from the millennial demographic. So still very strong um, interest from those aged 25 to 34, accounting for most of our leads uh, in terms of the largest uh, age bracket for the site. Behind there, we have our retirees. So we see a high potential there. Um, those age 65 and older accounted for about 4% 4 of our leads in 2018. And in 2019, about 3.5% of our leads. And in October 2020, that same 65 plus uh, age bracket was about 6% of our leads. So uh, an increase there. In terms of the condo market, so uh, this is one of the highest potential for investment in the sale and rental market. So Q4 2018, about 35% of our leads going to the condo market. In 2019, about uh, 32, 33% of our leads going into the condo market. And in uh, October of this year, about 21% of our leads going to the condo market. Breaking that a bit further, about 18% looking to buy and about 25% looking to rent. Um, so actually that's uh, uh, pretty promising numbers in the sense that people are still looking at condos um, despite um, the lockdown. It still, it still is a large asset group of, uh, of most of our interest for the website. Uh, we have seen a shift um, to a buyer's market. So in terms of properties for sale, 
uh, in the market, about 62% of that uh, of the properties listed were for sale in 2019. Moving into 2020, about 76% of our the properties on the market were are, are for sale. So an increase about 14% there, uh, showing that more people are looking to liquidate, uh, more people are looking um, to sell properties. Uh, so a number of different reasons happening uh, for that. Um, people who are overseas Filipino workers looking to uh, sell their properties. We also have um, uh, people who are business owners looking to sell properties uh, who may have been highly affected by the pandemic. Um, we also have uh, people who lost their jobs who are, who are landowners looking to liquidate there. So a number of reasons why uh, the buying market is quite strong now um, and, and is uh, definitely a buyer's market in the sense that we've got more properties for sale than, than for rent. Uh, where are those, um, where's that interest or where are those uh, sale properties going? Uh, we do see a growing interest in the luxury market. So 11% of the leads in 2018 were going to luxury. Fast forward to 2020, about 17 and a half percent of the leads going to the luxury market. Those properties are about 20 million and above. Um, we consider luxury. So definitely a growing interest in number of leads going to uh luxury properties. <clears throat> Common questions for buyers and investors or from buyers and investors. So number one being what is a good property investment? Um, so you typically have three different asset classes. You've got the houses, you've got condos, and you've got land. Um, in terms of our page views, uh, so there's two different verticals we look at. Uh, number one, we look at page views. And number two, we look at leads. So page views being just initial interest, um, leads being the ones that actually inquire and go and look at the property. Um, that's our uh, ex expertise is uh, that initial search and then the inquiry. Um, so if we look at houses, about 44% of our page views went to houses um, and about 28% of our leads went to the housing market. In terms of condos, uh, just behind uh, the houses, about 20% of our page views, and uh, even more importantly, about 24% of our leads going to condo. So um, a much bigger ratio there of people actually interested in purchasing a condo uh, based on people inquiring and going to visit the property itself. In terms of land, uh, that's the lowest. So about 17% there, both for page views and for leads. Where should property seekers look to buy? Um, so a number of different areas that we've uh, looked at as, as high trending areas. So of course, Metro Manila um, being a, a highly sought after location. So about 29% of our page views went to Quezon City and about 14% of our page views went to Makati followed by Paranaque about 11% there. Um, in the provinces, 17% to Cebu. Um, surprisingly, Antipolo about 14% and Baguio about 12%. Um, and that's just in terms of page views. So those are the initial interests, um, just looking. Uh, and then we go further into the leads. So these are people who actually went to the brokers themselves or to developers to click on the, on the actual listing. Uh, we've got about 27.5% going to Kazan City, 14% uh, going to Makati and Paranaque about 8%. So uh, very aligned with page views. Most people looking are also the ones inquiring. Um, in terms of the leads on the provin provincial side, uh, slightly lower, um, about 11% uh, in Cebu, 19% in Antipolo. So an increase there about 5% and Baguio about 8%. So slightly uh, lower there in terms of page views versus leads. So interesting to, to consider um, the two different verticals there, page views versus leads going in. And these are all for sale, as I mentioned. Um, in terms of locations for rent, uh, we look at um, a couple other cities that were highly prominent. So Quezon City and Makati still being number one, number two, but Manila being number three for page views for rent. And in the provinces, um, Cebu still number one at about 40%, but Angeles at about 13% and Davao about 10%. In terms of leads, uh, similar story. So Quezon City, Makati, and Manila, top three. Um, and in the provinces, Cebu, Angeles, and Davao, still one, two, and three. Um, Cebu leading the charge at about 35%. Another key um, 
factor to look into on what properties to invest in. Um, always important to consider amenities. So amenities being a major contributor to what people actually look for and purchase. Um, due to the lockdown uh, in the first half of 2020, these amenities were um, considered highly um, necessary. So swimming pool, about 16% required it. Internet connect connectivity, about 14%. And balcony space, about 8% there. Uh, more closet space, 5%. Garden area, 2%. And CCTV, about 1.75%. Uh, so a growing interest in amenities. Um, master plan communities, developers that highlight and uh, focus on these communities uh, with physical distancing in mind and a holistic approach. So amongst the crisis, these were some of the prominent amenities that we saw as a must have feature. So when is a good time to buy a property? Um, as mentioned, we're currently in a buyer's market. So about 76% of our transactions are for sale at the moment. Uh, which leads to more supply available, which makes uh, more room for negotiation, more room for price adjustment. Um, considering that, uh, I would say that uh, if you've got the liquidity to do it and, and you've got the holding power, then now would be a good time to buy a property. Um, these factors coming in from January to October, 2020, particularly in the luxury market, um, we're seeing high traffic on those sites. So, uh, and of course, condos um, in Metro Manila, being a, um, a sought after asset class. So if you've got um, the ability, ability to do so, luxury market, um, highest number of page views, um, Metro Manila still being the most attractive areas um, and about 76% of our listings uh, going to sale. So it makes it a room for a negotiation there and, and room for um, you know, a buyer's market. How, will we, how much will a property purchase affect personal finances? So looking at the two different asset classes here, we've got the 20 million and above um, as being our high end luxury property. So about 17% of our page views. Um, that is the most page views we have in terms of, uh, in terms of assets uh, classes. So high end being the most looked at, but then looking at leads. So the ones actually inquiring to buy, um, that's our affordable market. So 1.5 to 3 million pesos being the most uh, looked at in terms or most inquired for. Um, so realistically, people looking at uh, affordable market, but in terms of dreamers, in terms of people, you know, looking to, uh, um, you know, end use or people looking uh, at, at what they want one day, um, that's the high end market. In terms of rent, um, slightly different story. So about 5 million to 15 million. Uh, is the most page views and also the most page leads. So 33% of our page views going there and about 31% of our leads going to that uh, market. So that's sort of your affordable um, low mid range. Uh, in terms of pure, purely mid, uh, about 15 to 30 million uh, to 30,000 pesos a month for rent is roughly 30% of our page views and 30% of our leads. So can property seekers get more for less? So with these trends, we have seen a few highlighted points. So number one being flexible financing options. So since the pandemic hit, uh, property developers have turned to price reductions, discounts, um, flexible payment options, um, a number of different ways to attract um, buyers to their development. So flexibility being one, um, we also saw add-ons. So those who did not decide to uh, create any sort of a financial reduction did offer uh, things like um, added extra uh, internet connectivity, um, free appliances, add-on features to make the, the property more attractive. In terms of marketing to OFWs and foreign investors, um, we saw a certain profile of seekers. So I'll share with you those profiles now. So one profile we saw was the uh, millennial uh, demographic uh, increasing the interest in real estate. So um, as I mentioned before, it's been a growing trend, but if you look very uh, specifically um, at the page views, about 30% of our page views come from 25 to 34 year olds and about 25% of our leads coming from that group. Um, surprisingly, 18 to 24 year olds account for about 10% of our page views and leads. So uh, that's your uh, Gen 
um, Z group, um, you know, after millennials looking at investing in real estate. So early into their um, uh, journey uh, of um, financial freedom, we have as early as 18 year olds looking at uh, real estate. Um, and then you've got your, uh, your older demographic of 65 plus your baby boomers that accounts for about seven and a half percent of our page views and 5% of our leads. Um, from 2019, there's definitely increases in almost all uh, demographics, um, except for leads from the millennial group. So uh, we can probably attribute that to um, millennials looking uh, at uh, long-term investments, starting families. Um, they're not spending right now on travel or leisure. So financially, uh, they're probably looking at stability um, and looking to spend on um, not spur the moment, but more long-term investments. So um, that's why we're seeing an increase in the younger demographics for, for real estate. In terms of profiles for location, uh, of course, we've got our Southeast Asia friends from Singapore um, at about 5% of our page views. The Middle East accounting for about 4.5%, uh, specifically from Dubai. We also have the UK about 2%, Sydney about 2%, and uh, the US, particularly Los Angeles, about um, 2.3%. 2, uh, 2 and then we also have Doha at about 2% as well. Um, further to that, uh, we've got other cities like Melbourne, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, and Toronto, um, all following uh, under 2%, but still a significant amount of page views coming from our overseas uh, um, locations. So what are they looking for exactly? So most of those page views uh, are going towards, um, uh, most of those page views are coming in between January and October of 2020. Uh, compare that to last year, uh, we have seen an increase of page views um, in the same time period for properties for sale. In terms of leads, same story. So increase of leads accounting for January to October, um, from the same period to 2019. So more people interested in real estate now than they were last year. So despite um, uh, economic crisis, despite uh, volatility in the market, um, despite the pandemic, people still increased interest in real estate compared to last year. And what are those overseas profiles looking at? 36% um, of them look at houses. 29% look at land and about 20% are looking at condos. So um, fairly healthy mix of all, um, you know, fairly equal um, with uh, houses taking a lead and condos following uh, and land following behind. So buyers are interested in houses, land and condos, um, housing being 40%, land 36 and condos uh, about uh, nine, uh, sorry, 16.5% there. That's for uh, the, 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 uh, the time period, January to October specifically versus 2019, that same time period. In terms of content marketing, so attracting the right audience to your properties. So if you're going to target the right audience, what are you going to target? Um, so for uh, the luxury market, co creating content for the luxury uh, market, 31% of our page views are going there. That's 9 million plus uh, properties. Uh, specifically, you might wanna target millennial friendly locations. So that's Makati and Kazan City. Uh, Makati being a trendy um, CBD close to work um, and Kazan City being close to schools, close to uh, family properties, uh, predominantly and historically being a highly residential area um, popular for millennials. So um, those two locations uh, lead to charge for the right audience, as well as uh, properties at the 9 million plus price point. If you're looking to attract the right market, you might want to also consider flexible payment terms, affordability, and um, the mid segment. So that being your 450K to 3 million peso uh, price point, um, that accounts for about 36% of our leads and the uh, mid sector three to 9 million, about 34% of our leads there. So flexible payments within those segments should account to more um, attractive uh, properties for buyers. 
in terms of um, focusing on the right uh, investment potential for your property. So I would suggest to put properties for sale rather than rent. So about 69% of our page views went to properties for sale and that's roughly about 50% of our leads as well. So um, in terms of page views, definitely uh, more people looking at the properties for sale. So to wrap up, uh, we have a number of different reasons why the Philippines is the perfect place uh, to invest in a home and a haven to invest for foreign nationals. Uh, some of the key um, trends that we saw were people are looking for value for money. They're looking for smart, modern, smart, modern, connected communities. They're looking for a great ROI. Um, they're looking for real estate hotspots that provide convenience. And they're looking for a place where you can live close to work. Um, so based on some of the trends that we've seen through uh, January to October this year, based on page views, based, based on uh, inquiries, based on some of the, the key locations in the provinces and Metro Manila, based on some of the different asset classes, condo versus house and lot versus land, um, these are some of the trends that we think are most relevant to home buyers today. So with that, um, I'll open the floor to any questions. Um, like I mentioned before, our job at Lamudi is to help connect people um, through uh, our website. So if you have a property that you want to sell, if you're looking for a property, um, we want to help you find that uh, perfect property uh, for you, whether you're investor, investment or end use. Uh, like I said, we've got hundreds of thousands of properties. We have hundreds, uh, millions of page views every month. So if you have any questions about how to put your property on the Moody or um, how to uh, find properties there, uh, please let me know and I'm happy to um, help you out there. So thanks again for your time. Thank you, Federal Land. Thank you, Charlie, for reaching out um, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ken. So uh, guys, you can ask Kenny a few questions. Roel, um, some of our clients, so thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, very useful information. Actually, we've been looking for those information. Um, there's always been a um, question regarding the luxury market um, as to why and um, are they really looking for investments now? Yeah. But your numbers are showing that there's a high number of page views for luxury. That's right. But yeah. then not entirely converting to actual leads or sales, right? So, yeah, that's what the numbers say. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you think is the reason, and what could be the motivation for these people to pursue going, getting into an investment now for this market? Um, I think luxury market is definitely uh, an attractive place for people to look. So that's why I think we're getting the the page views. People are interested to see what's out there. People um, sometimes. Uh, you know, we call the dreamer effect, but sometimes people uh, dream where they want to live one day. So they're looking at the luxury market. Um, so we do get a lot of interest. And I think that's always going to be uh, someone's aspiration when they buy a home uh, is to get a uh, luxury property. And just the reality of the, the asset class itself is um, only a certain number of people can afford luxury. So um, right. if you're looking at just numbers, you know, it, it would make sense that more people um, inquire for affordable than luxury because there's just not enough people that can afford luxury, but um, the payout is obviously much better for brokers and for sellers if you can afford luxury. So, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, a self-filtering um, type of scenario where um, only a certain number of people are actually going to inquire for luxury. But uh, in terms of our affordable market, yes, um, more people are looking to move right now. We've seen trends to the provinces. We've seen trends towards house and lots. Um, so a number of different reasons why people are looking at the affordable market. Um, with that said, um, I think the numbers kind of match up with uh, what you would logistically think um, the trends would look like. So um, luxury still being the uh, most looked after, but uh, in terms of leads, um, only the only a certain asset uh, only a certain type of buyer will actually go and see the property itself. Yep. Thank you, mm -hmm. Ken. I agree. Um, there's a question here. Uh, from your own perspective, since you are also a foreigner, are you still a foreigner <laughs> expat living here in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. What are the reasons why you choose to stay here and not somewhere else? Um, so, yeah, I suppose um, I'm Filipino, but I've, I've I, I didn't grow up here. I grew up in the States. Um, so an expat in that sense. Um, I think that people are interested in the Philippines. Um, you know, obviously we've been in the longest lockdown globally. Um, 
but in terms of the economy, uh, still fairly stable um, in the sense that uh, we're not facing any sort of uh, crisis in the housing market. Um, you know, I think if you look at other uh, investment avenues or investment products, um, a lot less volatile than the stock market, a lot less volatile than um, in, uh, um, you know, businesses you might want to invest in uh, here. So um, real estate being one of the safest investments in the Philippines, um, you know, we, we do have a highly concentrated CBD so that uh, that market really doesn't move that that much. It's got really strong holding power. Um, we have a number of properties that um, have good credible developers attached to them. So you can, you know, basically predict your, your income growth um, through capital appreciation and the rental market, the rental market still being 50% of our increase. Uh, so still rental market is still very strong um, with the growing number of people uh, continuing to stay in the Philippines. I think that um, people will, will always look at the rental market as a, a strong source of income. So for investment, um, you know, uh, there's only a certain number of um, supply in certain segments. So if you're looking at luxury, there's only a certain number of luxury uh, condos available in, let's say, Makati BGC. Um, there's a certain number of people that, that, that need a place to rent, um, and that number is still going to be there sh quite strong. So uh, the prices haven't moved that much. Um, but definitely, um, I think there's, there's a number of reasons why um, the Philippines would be a good, invest good investment, but it's, a, it's a definitely a long-term investment for real estate. You know, we're not... Uh, you don't want to invest for the short term. You want to invest for the for the long term, which is what kind of what we see in the trends. Right, agree. I hope that answers your question, Ruel. Okay, so Ken is uh, not totally an expert anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, guys? Or nobody wants to. Ask. I have a question for you. Uh, do you sure. think the U.S. elections? The change in presidency, if ever Trump doesn't win, will have an, an impact to the industry, to the real estate market. Do you think that um, Filipinos based in the U.S., if Trump stays in power, will move back to the Philippines or mm -hmm. nothing will change? Um, I think the, the initial shock will definitely, um, you know, you'll see the ripple effects throughout uh, every economy in the world. The, just the, the way that the U.S., um, uh, deals with um, you know foreign uh, diplomacies that the, 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 they have a they're in, integrated in almost every economy somehow so um, we'll definitely see some effects of that initially in the market um, probably uh, initial shock will um, you know be people looking to sell or looking to buy um, sell being if they um, you know are are looking to to move places they need cash they potentially want to leave the us if they're an ofw um if uh, trump is reelected or, or biden is reelected to either or um so we'll see initial movement but um historically um you know i, I think that the the real estate market is just a stable market here um i think we we have enough domestic demand um that it it really won't affect um the pricing too much. Uh, a lot of our developers have very strong holding power. So if you're looking at the primary market, um, I don't think it's going to affect the, the pricing or the demand too much uh, from there. But uh, of course, with any major change in the world, um, there's always going to be a, a ripple effect. So um, you could potentially find some some good deals um, in a short term for that. Uh, but but long term effects on the real estate market, I would um, I would doubt it. Mm, yeah, I agree. Thank you. So, Ken, there's one more question. Uh, sure. This will be the last. So, yep. looking at the figures from April, when the community quarantine started up until now, can you say that the property market is coming back? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what... So, the, the property market is so big um, that you have to look at certain areas in, in, in its own market. So, um, rentals being one... Uh, First sale being one, condos being one, house and lot being one, uh, provinces, Metro Manila. So to say that um, the the whole market is um, completely back, it would be unfair to say. But I think um, if you look at certain uh, certain asset classes, so luxury market really, uh, from what I've heard from brokers um, and what we see on the website, the, the prices that really haven't moved that much. In fact, on our site, uh, properties have gotten more expensive. Um, just because people are, you know, trying to increase the prices to, to leave room for negotiation. Um, 
in terms of the rental from what I've heard from brokers on the ground is that um, there is a lot of room for from tag from sort of the price tag to closing price there is there's been a bigger margin recently on that so you can find some deals in the rental market. Um, we have seen shifts uh, at you know from uh, CBDs to the provinces so um, I think that's you know. Uh, spurring or it's a catalyst for growth in certain areas. So we've seen increased sales and increased listings and increased activity in certain areas. So um, not even so much of a recovery, but you know, a, a new trend emerging in the sense that it's a, it's a new market. Um, the major markets, I think, uh, like uh, Makati, BGC, Ortigas, you know, your your typical um, you know safe investments will still continue to be safe investments. So uh, you know, it, it's. The, what would really happen, I think, from the shift from ECQ to GCQ was a pent-up demand. So we saw a lot of listings come on our website in June. I think we increased our listing count month to month about 200%. So people holding onto properties and then all of a sudden GCQ happens. Let's sell it. Let's get some cash. Uh, we saw a huge increase of properties come onto our website, huge increase of page views coming in, people looking to move. Okay, we've been stuck in ECQ for the last three, four months. What's available in the market? Where can I move too quickly? So we've seen a lot of interest there. So um, definitely interesting trends that you see based on, um, you know, how the how government regulation and how um, ECQ and GCQ kind of affects the real estate trends and what people are looking at.